are known to be congested. That is because the number of inmates are over the required number. But this is also what accommodates circumstantial children. Now these are children that are born while their mother is serving a prison sentence or they are incarcerate, incarcerated while they are under the age of four. This is my life. We'll take a break. My name is Francesca Piribanda and you're watching Nightlife. My guest tonight is the mother of Mila's founder, Faith Masupa. She founded the organization to help underprivileged children, including the circumstantial children. But before we get into the interview with Faith, let's just show you a clip of a mother who's raising a ch her child after serving a prison sentence. Now she shares with, with us how life was when she was raising her child behind bars and how it's been since she came out. We'll be right back. There exists a hidden population in Zambia's prisons that remain ignored and yet whose rights and needs are just as important as any other member of society. Circumstantial children are either born in prison or are under the age of four at the time they enter prison on account of their mother's incarceration. Baby Paul, who is now three years old, was born in prison. His mother, Enes Narumboe, narrates her prison ordeal. <laughs> How did Paul and indeed other circumstantial children survive harsh prison conditions? Mother of Millions is a non-governmental organization that helps women and circumstantial children to integrate in society after prison life. Faith Masupa is the founder of the organization. Our focus has been on the circumstantial children and the female in, in the Zambian prison. So, um, in working with the Zambian prison, just at Chimbokaila alone, we have taken care of over 500 children. And we've also been um, offering skills of reintegration, helping the girls to reintegrate into society once they are released from prison to find, at least find a standard. There is an urgent need for government and other stakeholders to swiftly move in and emulate mother of millions if the plight of circumstantial children is to be resolved. Peter Schadi, Damo News. So Faith, welcome to Nightlife once again. What motivated you to venture into charity work? Thank you so much, Francesca, for having me. I ventured into this work, particularly Mother of Millions Foundation and the prison service um, with children in prison. Uh, when I was pregnant with my first son, I was driving past the prison and I had no idea what was behind the prison bars. I was prompted to stop. And when I found out that there were children being born and raised in prison, I couldn't keep silent because I realized that these children became prisoners of the law. When they had committed no crime, they started serving the same sentence as their mothers. And so I just thought this could be my child, you know, and I needed to do something about that. So that prompted me to do what I do today. And just how big is this problem of circumstantial children, especially when we talk about numbers within the prison facilities around the country? We have a persistent number. We have, a, this actually is a huge challenge because every, nearly every prison in Zambia has children mm -hmm. in it. For example, currently, if you went to Chimbokaila, popularly known as Wasaka Central Prison, you'll find about 18 babies, as I'm speaking to you right now. When we started our class six years ago, we had 42 children in prison. Now you realize that these kids are sleeping in the cells, they're eating the same food as their mothers. They're going to the same toilets as the adults. And also the language is that of a prisoner. So 
we decided to do something. And by doing that, we thought the best way of changing or transforming a mindset of a child is by introducing education, nutrition, and healthcare. Why education? This is to transform the mindset of a child. Because if you enter prison today, you'll be greeted by a little boy or girl saying, Buana. That's a common language. So you have a child who is speaking prison language, who is acting like a prisoner. And the only way we can change that is what we are currently doing and we've been doing. What's, uh, what sort of help are you getting in order to sustain this, this program that you've initiated? Are you getting any funding, you know, any resources to help these children? Not at all. I would have mentioned, actually, we have been self-sustaining as an organization, which hasn't been very easy. We've called upon um, several ministries to come on board and help. But if they don't, that does not mean that we have to stop what we're doing. It hasn't been easy running with um, the project of having children in prison. It's like having so many children of your own at home. I'll tell you that there are babies that are born and have no diapers. There are babies that are born and are sick and don't have food, proper food. And I think as Zambia, we sign the statutory instruments that actually give these children rights. And this is a small group, a population that can be controlled, that can be managed and is not managed properly even by our committed bodies or ministries that are supposed to run with this. So we have a small or rather a marginalized number of children that are not considered as compared to other children and whose rights are uh, violated nearly every single day. I'll give you an example of um, one of our children. He was playing one afternoon and he was with a teacher and um, it was time to be locked up. So he had his ball and he was busy playing and the mother just quickly got him and said, oh, we've got to go in. And this was broad daylight. It wasn't like it was dark, and he still wanted to play. So now you tell me what's the difference between a prison and that child who's been locked up at the same time as their mother. So we can only do what we have done, and we are proud to do what we do today, with or without support. We will not stop doing it. And what has been response from government in terms of helping out, especially ensuring that the circumstantial children do not suffer psychologically when they're out of prison? The first five years of a child are the most fundamental. It's in the first five years of the child that a child picks up everything. The trauma, the psycho psychology effects, the reactions. I think the first five years were crucial. I can remember exactly what happened to me. You know. Now imagine the first place your child knows home is a prison cell. So I feel the government, honestly speaking, needs to step up. They've done very little as regards the marginalized group of children. I've been on the ground. I would love to be challenged if someone came up and said, we've done this. I would like, to, I would like them to show me what they've done, really, if they have to show me to say, this is what we have done, this is what we're doing, this is so much that we've allocated to this number of children. Mm -hmm. And these children need the support of this government and many other governments because look they know no political party they are the future leaders of tomorrow they are the silent voices that are suffering together with traumatized mothers when a prisoner who is a mother was sent into prison this child is listening to everything that goes on if there are fights within there the child is present if there is vulgar language the child is present whatever affects the prisoners the child is equally affected and so what would be some of your recommendations to government to ensure that that child's rights are protected? Firstly, the government should be on the ground. They should, I feel, appreciate some of probably our presence there. Because look, we're not, we're complementing their efforts. All right? We are there and we're complementing their efforts. But we can only do so much when we partner together with the government. And I feel... We need to uphold the rights of these children. One, they need to realize that children in there are malnourished. There are times when we have children who are born with HIV and sometimes are probably not even taken care of, you know, nutrition-wise, you know. We have mothers that are equally infected or affected, and some of them don't know how to take care of themselves. So imagine if a mother has a monthly period, for example, please pardon my language, and a child comes across a sanitary towel that is dirty. 
Because that's an environment. It's a prison environment. You can't take that away. It's not a home. Okay? So these, all these things affect these children. So children need a home space. The children need a proper space. Children need a good education. Remember that it's enshrined in the constitutions, the CRSC, that a child has the right to be with its mother. But in its best interest, the government equally has a right to look at the best interest of that child. So I recommend that if we cannot take the child from its mother, let's create a mother-baby facility. Facilities that accommodate and give space and privacy and also give the rights of these children, you know, let the children enjoy their rights. So I recommend our organization, because even if we've not had resources, Francesca, even if we've not had partnerships, and I'm so proud to say this boldly saying it, we have made a difference in the lives of over 500 children just at Chimbokaila since we started over six years ago, and still making difference in the lives of other prisons across Zambia. There's a lot to be done. There's a lot. Tell me about the facility that Mother of Millions Foundation is running in terms of the space where the kids can have their, you know, play time, their meal time. Um, how, how is the arrangement like? So when we first got into prison, the female section of the prison, there was literally nothing for the children. Even the, 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 um, the slab that's there. I remember my first encounter. It had rained and the children were playing in dirt and mud. And I remember that... Um, water would collect, you know. And the first thing we did when we had our little bit of money was to slab the female section of the uh, Lusaka Central Prison. Secondly, we had to demarcate a dining hall because there was nothing, no space for the children and created a bright space. Today you can walk in there, you find a TV, you find little beds, you find two teachers who we are actually struggling to pay. But these are teachers that have been taking care of these children. Then when you enter, as you are trying to enter the female section, is a building that we've constructed, which is up to roof level, almost complete. This structure has been built by Mother of Millions to ensure that we have over a thousand women graduates, prisoners with different skills, so that when they leave prison, they're able to, you know, inculcate or rather integrate into society with proper skills and find a livelihood. Now, as we end the program, how many other uh, children are you helping out as Mother of Millions Foundation, apart from these uh, circumstantial children? We have a program called Back to School. A Back to School program is looking at children whose parents, by extension, are in prison, and these have been left outside. Whenever a father or mother is in prison, there are children who are left outside, who are left in the streets. So we have a program called Back to School, where we've begun to trace the children of these prisoners who are in prison and getting them back into school. We also have a project in Sandulula or rather Bochi Kamitondo where we're trying to, you know, give skills to young people because of the gangs that have, you know, built up. And remember, Zambia is sitting on a time bomb. On the other hand, we're raising good children, but on the other hand, there's less that has been given to these other children. And that's why you find that within these townships, there are all these little gangs. And so Mother of Millions Foundation got into a partnership, or rather an MOU, which was still trying to settle with a Kitwa City Council, um, where we, um, we've been given a, a place called Sandulula. This is a center where we're trying to breed or bring these young people and encourage them to get into schools, encourage them to get into skills and just to avoid children getting in conflict with the law. So basically our projects are there to ensure that as we are raising good children at home, we are able to also consider the children that are unable to go to school, unable, they're coming from poor, stricken families. Mm -hmm. You know, those children equally deserve a future. And tell us about this BBC award that you've been nominated uh, for. So, thank you so much. Um, BBC Outlook nominated me among its thousands. Of course, I'm on the to uh, top 20 nominees, and uh, it's because they recognized the work that... Um, we are carrying out as an organization. So um, we'll be getting our results perhaps um, in June, and uh, we're hoping for the best. And I'm, I'm so grateful that we've been recognized um, worldwide. And I hope we can make a difference together as a country, as a nation, but as Africa, and we combat this issue. This is a very, very important issue.
This has been Night Live and today we were discussing circumstantial children with Mother of Millions found, uh, founder Faith Masupa. My name is Francesca Piribanda. Good night.